This week, Joe Rogan explains how he feels about slaughterhouses. A vegan cooking show is coming to ITV, and a dancewear brand creates cashmere made from beans. All this and more on Live Kindly's Weekly Vegan News. If you're new to our channel, you can subscribe by hitting the leaf icon in the bottom right corner of the video. Click the bell icon to turn on notifications and please be sure to like and comment below. Oatly launched a new advertising campaign at Waterloo Station in London. The giant billboard, situated above cafes and turnstiles, reads Go Ahead, Eat Like a Vegan. Opened in 1848, Waterloo Station is the busiest station in the UK, with more than 94 million passengers coming through the station in the last year, according to the Office of Rail and Road. Last year, Oatly announced the launch of a £700,000 advertising campaign in the UK. The oat milk company is known for its unique advertising style. It created a 15-second commercial, which aired on All4, the on-demand platform for Channel 4. Wow! Wow! No cow! No, no, no! Oatly also put up advertisements in several London underground stations, including King's Cross, Oxford Circus, Shoreditch, Peckham, and Brixton. The ads featured statements like, It's like milk, but made for humans. Michael Lee, Oatly's creative and strategic director for international markets, said in a statement, Some consider our messaging to be controversial. We disagree. It's fact, because our oat drinks actually are made for humans rather than for baby cows. Louis C. Hoyos, director of the vegan documentary The Game Changers, was a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. The pair discussed climate change, factory farming, and how Rogan feels about slaughterhouses. Rogan has long been vocal about his animal-based diet and has frequently encouraged his vegan guests to eat non-vegan food. However, he may be turning over a new leaf. Musing on how we might be able to feed their growing population, Rogan says he has hope for clean meat, real meat grown with animal cells without slaughter. I am not a fan of factory farming. It's the reason why I got into hunting in the first place. I saw a lot of those PETA documentaries, uh, and I just didn't want to have any part of any of that shit. Look, all that stuff is wrong. I mean, all of it's wrong. I mean, but, but, whether chickens raising chickens like that, or cows like that, or pigs like that, he added that ag-gag laws keep people from divulging the horrors of these factory farms. There's got to be a way to stop those laws, first of all. You, you should, these places should be transparent. If there's something they do that's abhorrent, if something they do, you, you could see the lives of these animals when they're treated in these horrific ways. It's not necessary. It's, not, it's just they're doing that for profit. And this is why you can get a chicken sandwich for $1.99 or whatever the f*** it is. The podcast also recently had Wu-Tang Clan frontman Rizza on as a guest, along with comedian and radio host Donnell Rawlings. In response to a question from Rawlings about what makes a true vegan, both Rogan and Rizza agreed that it's a mix of health reasons and animal welfare. But for the rapper, it leans more toward the latter. To be honest with you, bro, I just, you know, I just hit you with this right here. The reality, how I feel, no animal needs to die for me to live. Going vegan hasn't always been an easy journey for Riza, who said he loved poultry dishes like turkey and chicken wings. In 1996, he changed all of his red meat dishes to poultry, but he soon realized that wasn't going to work either. Like I, when I was younger, I could knock out about 30 chicken wings. You know what I mean? I mean, anybody can do that, right? Man, but you one can't day, keep pointing at me like that. About the 29th chicken wing, right, my teeth hit, hit the bone. <laughs> King! And my mom said, no more, dead bird. Coming up, the vegan meat market is projected to reach $140 billion. Popular Greek yogurt brand Chobani is launching a dairy-free oat milk, coffee creamers, and oat yogurt. Founded in 2005, Chobani is the top-selling Greek yogurt brand in America. It also operates the world's largest yogurt facility. But... Chobani CEO Hamdi Ulukaya noticed oat milk's popularity after purchasing a stake in the Philadelphia-based coffee chain La Colombe in 2015. It inspired the brand's move into the oat milk market. Chobani will offer its new oat milk in four flavors, plain, vanilla, chocolate, and plain extra creamy. Its oat yogurt will launch in four flavors, vanilla, strawberry vanilla, blueberry pomegranate, and peach mandarin. Chobani president Peter McGinnis told Forbes, We think oat is the superior plant. 
Oat uses very little water and it delivers more nutrition than coconut cream, almond milk, soy milk, or cashew milk. And it tastes better. The vegan meat market could be worth $140 billion by 2029, according to a new report from British multinational investment bank Barclays. It revealed that while meat consumption is on the up due to a growing global population, there is also a big market opportunity for plant-based meat brands. The vegan meat market is worth $14 billion, but it could grow to $140 billion by 2029, accounting for 10% of the global meat industry. According to the report, due to rising demand and a growing population, global meat consumption is on the rise, especially in the US, which currently makes up about $270 billion of the $1.4 trillion global meat industry. We believe, therefore, that there is a bigger market opportunity for plant-based and maybe even lab-grown protein that was projected for electric vehicles 10 years ago. A new Sunday morning vegan cooking show starring Bosch is coming to ITV. Henry Firth and Ian Teesby, cookbook authors and the founders of recipe site Bosch, will host Living on the Veg, a 10-part series set to air in early 2020. As you know already, we set Bosch up to take vegan mainstream and this is another marker in time for us and the vegan movement as a whole. So if you like our recipes, if you like cooking Bosch food, you're gonna get all the recipes that you love, but in this beautiful new format with an incredible film crew, director, producer, everybody purely making Bosch recipes look amazing. Living on the Veg aims to show how simple, varied, and delicious vegan cooking is. Every Sunday morning, new guests will join Firth and TSB. They will create a range of dishes, including breakfasts, lunches, dinners, desserts, and healthy snacks. Executive producer Michael Connock said, With the subject of diet taking such a prominent place in the climate change debate, it seems timely and relevant to be producing a program about plant-based food. In fact, it's small decisions like choosing a fish-free dinner over cod and chips that are going to save our oceans. At least, that's what Chris Kerr thinks. He is the Chief Investment Officer at New Crop Capital and CEO of vegan seafood brand Good Catch Foods. Kerr is on a mission to turn the seafood industry on its head. The fishing industry is responsible for significant damage to the oceans. Overfishing not only impacts fish populations, but larger cetaceans often end up as bycatch or entangled in industrial fishing nets. Every year, around 300,000 whales and dolphins lose their lives due to entanglement. Opting for sustainable vegan fish could help to make a huge difference for marine life. Kerr doesn't believe in arguing over moral purity. He's more about working effectively together toward a common goal. Each of us can take small steps toward a better world, he told Live Kindly. When we take thousands or millions of small steps together collectively, we are taking a supremely giant leap toward a better world, and hopefully saving it. The giant leap for Good Catch Foods is saving the oceans from overfishing and its creatures from entanglement and bycatch. But small steps like offering fish-free flaky tuna is what counts right now. But it's not just about one brand. There are many out there trying to make a difference, says Kerr. New Crop Capital has 35 companies in its portfolio. Each one is creating direct vegan replacements for meat, dairy, eggs, and seafood. City Council members in New York City and Los Angeles are calling for businesses to cut ties with companies responsible for the Amazon rainforest fires. Fires burning in the Amazon have been linked to the beef industry. Cattle ranchers often set fire to areas of the forest in order to clear land for their herds. There have been 41,000 recorded fire locations this year so far, according to the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research. The fires are devastating for indigenous people and wild animals, but they also have a wider impact. Amazonian trees absorb carbon dioxide and are an extremely helpful resource in the fight against the climate crisis. When these trees are lost, it can be devastating in the fight against climate change. NYC City Council members Costa Constantinidis and Justin Brannan are co-sponsors of the new resolution in partnership with vegan Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. On the West Coast, LA City Council members Paul Koritz and David Ryu have put forward a similar resolution. Adams said, 
Today, we urge both city agencies and local businesses to cut ties with any company linked to the multinational corporations responsible for the fires still raging throughout the Amazon rainforest. Each individual consumer choice, each corporate decision, and each specific legislative policy must be geared toward making our planet more sustainable and habitable for generations to come. NYC and LA are the two most populous cities in the United States. City council members from both hope that they can lead by example. They want to inspire the other 35,000 cities in the country to join them and introduce similar resolutions. Lunchables creator Dr. Rhody Hawkins is now the president and CEO of plant-based meat brand Improved Nature. The company recently launched a vegan chicken range, which includes nuggets, tenders, and fillets, at East Coast-based grocery store chain ShopRite. Founded in 2015, Improved Nature aims to help the food system transition away from animal-based products using sustainable plant-based protein. Hawkins believes the food industry is changing. Vegan meat companies, like Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat, are soaring in popularity. Major fast food chains, like McDonald's, Burger King, and White Castle, now offer realistic plant-based burgers. Hawkins thinks the same thing could happen with vegan chicken. This is a really exciting time for us, as well as the food industry overall. Since the launch of several plant-based beef alternative companies, there has been a growing demand for plant-based chicken alternatives. American dancewear brand KD New York launched vegan cashmere. The vegetable cashmere is natural, cruelty-free, flexible, and sustainable. Made from a byproduct of tofu production, the vegan cashmere also has antibacterial qualities and features superior drape and breathability. The range features 13 pieces, including hoodies, camisoles, shawls, leggings, and leg warmers. Traditional cashmere comes from the hair of a cashmere or pashmina goat. According to KD New York, surging goat populations from an unregulated market is causing erosion and desertification of the Mongolian grasslands. Around 90% of the world's cashmere is sourced from goats farmed in China and Mongolia. Major fashion retailers such as ASOS, H&M, and Le Chateau have all banned cashmere for animal welfare reasons. An expose of cashmere production from international animal rights group PETA revealed workers stepping on frightened goats while ripping out their hair with metal combs. KD New York co-founder David Lee told Live Kindly that vegetable cashmere production is a closed loop and uses no additional resources from the earth. In all of our testing, it has proven to be superior to animal fiber cashmere, Lee said. It has greater tensile strength, a lower pill factor, is moth resistant and machine washable. That's it for today. What do you think of Chobani launching oat yogurt? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you again next week for Live Kindly's weekly vegan news.